Thank you. Thank you. Stage is yours. OK, it looks to work. So I have uh, 15 minutes to talk about a subject that is very dear to me. It's product. Just a couple of weeks ago, I was in San Francisco. Oh, I think so. Next, next. I was in San Francisco, and uh, there were like the two main conferences of the year. There was TechCrunch Disrupt, and there was uh, F8, the Facebook conference. And what struck me there is that there's a lot of, of course, American startup. They're very good, especially they're very good at marketing themselves. And I found that the best startups were actually the European ones. And um, I think we're very good in product in Europe. And I wanted to give you a feedback on what it is to be a product CEO based on my experience with, of course, NetVibe and now with Jolly Cloud. So I consider myself a product CEO. It took me a long time to understand what it means. And what it means is simply that I believe that good product change the world. And I think many of you here in the audience believe so. You build your product and you believe that if your product is the best, you got a chance to make a difference. So it's interesting because when you're a product guy, you have a very different approach to things. You're not like a business guy or an analytic guy, financial. You can spend your time doing things in cafe. I don't know if any of you spend a lot of time in cafe writing and having ideas, observing people. Um, you think about the process and you just wonder, mm, maybe there's a way to do, a, to do it a better way. And I think what is interesting is that we have interests beyond technology, of course. And every time we see process or things, we see opportunities where others don't. Um, there's a, I don't know if you guys are uh, reading Inc. You know, it's a US magazine about entrepreneurs. But there was like a few months ago an interview of uh, David Karp, who's the CEO of Tumblr, and he's explaining the way he works. And what strikes me is if you take Katarina Fake or him or other people, the way they work is pretty similar. We spend a lot of time thinking, figuring out things. So welcome to the world of product. I'd like to be very simple and give you a few lessons I've learned because, as you know, I started NetVibe six years ago. We had created an amazing product, and I think we screwed up. I screwed up, actually, because I don't take over responsibilities for a few reasons, and I'd like to review that reason with you. First thing is, most people won't tell you, but when you're a product person, you're unique. You're a very unique person. The job we have is very hard because People don't see the world like us. When we see something important, other people believe it's not that important. The other thing is VCs don't really measure our talent. They don't really understand what is a good product person. It depends. You have a lot of exceptions. There's a few people that came today that are really good at product. But most of the time, they cannot really measure the success of a product. You can see the success of financial. It's pretty easy. Just look at the numbers. But product, is the product better? Are we going in the right direction? This is something that I found very hard sometimes to explain to people that don't believe that product is the key. The thing is we're obsessed. We're not obsessed by what I call the marketing, business, and sales. We're obsessed by process, design, and product. We see a process, we design it, we make it in reality as a product. And then we try it again and again and again. And this is something that is extremely important and extremely valuable. Because when you think about it, the most successful entrepreneurs are product people. Think about Bezos, even think about Steve Jobs, of course, but think about Zook, think about all these people that actually build products that are valuable. Their success was not only the product. The success was their ability to actually keep going and building the product the way they thought it was. The biggest challenge is branding. And don't get me wrong, when I'm talking about branding, I'm talking about creating a new brand. When you start a company, you have to get a new brand. I started NetVibe, that was unknown at the time. I started Jolly Cloud, it was unknown. And the key thing is how do we get this brand? How do we create that brand? And how do we grow that brand? That is the first mission of a product CEO. It's extremely hard, of course, it's not easy. If it was easy, actually, everybody would do it. But if you succeed, you have enormous value. 
Think about Facebook, Google, all these words are verbs today. They're, they're not only brands, they're part of our life. One of the things that is extremely important is that, especially when you start, is never dilute your brand. When you have something that you believe is valuable, don't go and compromise yourself with stupid deals, compromise yourself with stupid partnership. If you believe that your brand is extremely important, work hard and do not dilute it. There's an interesting read about, uh, you know, on AVC's uh, Fred Wilson blog about the MVP, but it's not the minimal viable product, the minimal viable personality. A brand has a personality, a product has a personality. And I think you should go and read that article, it's actually very interesting. The other thing that is harder than it seems is to keep the product cool. The product is your main value proposition. Sometimes I would say it's your only value proposition. And it's so easy to become uncool. To get cool again is so hard. I remember exactly the time when NetVibe was actually at the top. It was the most interesting product. Everybody said, oh, this is amazing. Years later, oh yeah, that was a good idea. That was a, that. So you have to keep the momentum. You have to make sure that your product is cool. And that is something that we don't say enough when we start companies. You have to focus on the value of your product, the coolitude of your product. How do you want to change the world if your product is uncool? That is the question you should ask yourself every day. Your vision. This is interesting because the vision, we always say the vision is an abstract word. The vision is a day-to-day, -day, actually. The vision is you start, and tomorrow, and the day after, and the day after, you have new ideas, new ways, new possibilities. You just, go, you just go, you take a shower and you have a new idea. Or you just go to a coffee, you talk to a guy and say, oh, that's interesting. I probably, you guys have seen the social network, but you know the idea of poke and relationship was just because Zook was, in a, was somewhere in, a, in, a, in a, one of the cafeteria of Harvard and a guy said, oh, do you know if this girl has, is single? And he said, oh, that's interesting. Just put that into. So the vision is a process and the vision is you. And the vision is what makes the company unique. So you make the company unique. The best way to describe it, I think, is what Jeff Bezos says all the time. It's, you've been stubborn on the vision, flexible on the details. I love that sentence. It's actually so true. The vision is very important. The first idea, the idea that you love, the idea that actually decided yourself to create a company, you have to keep it strongly. I actually find weird now in the US, people talk about pivot, you know, you just do something and like three weeks later, it doesn't work, you do something else. That is not a vision. I mean, if you really want to spend time doing something valuable, you really need to focus and believe in yourself and believe in your idea. The art of solitude and taking time. This is something that is usually incompatible with the startup world. You have to go fast, you have to do it right away, it has to be shipped next week, etc., etc. This is all bullshit, in fact. The reality is that there's two key things in a startup. For a product CEO, the first thing is solitude. I'm just going to give you a simple example. If you just go leave and, and start to be with yourself and try to have an idea about something, in the next two hours, most of the ideas that you had are other people's ideas or things you heard in the, during the day. So you really need time with yourself to actually believe, to actually understand what you really want, what you really think. It's extremely hard today to, to understand what we really want, what we really think. Because you're every day with people who tell you, oh, we should do this, you should do that, oh, this is not good, this guy did it and this and that and that. But the reality is that if you want to listen to yourself, you need to be alone and you need to take time alone to really figure it out. The other thing is taking time. This is a big problem today. And I think Dustin Moskovitz says it pretty well. He said, actually, if I was starting Facebook today, I couldn't find the people to spend time enough to build a product that is valuable. The value of a company sometimes is to have the same team working on the problem long enough to find the solution. And this is extremely valuable. And sometimes we hear, oh no, if it doesn't work, you just have to change, do something. No, sometimes you have to figure it out until you actually figure it out. And that you need to have a good team, you have to trust the team, and you have to work hard. I'm sometimes talking about T.S. Eliot, who is like one of the biggest uh, um, poets in the US. He actually probably wrote 150 pages in his life. It means that every page of his write, but it's supposed to be one of the best 
writer was every month, one page a month. So sometimes to write, to do something valuable, you cannot do it fast. You have to take time. This is a problem, it's what I call the death trap, the pleaser. The pleaser are everywhere. And the problem we have when we start a company is we're alone. We actually believe in that idea. Most other people don't. And one day, of course, if you're successful, everybody told you, oh, I knew it would work. But sometimes you have what I call the pleasers, these people around you that tell you, oh, you're part of this community of entrepreneurs, and sometimes you want to do things because it makes you look cool to the community. You're probably going to be around in all these conferences or meeting VCs and people who tell you, oh, you should do this because it's cool, it's trendy. The problem is, again, if you know what you want to do, is you have to make sure that you actually focus on what matters. So do not listen to the pleasers. Be polite, learn, take the opportunity, but don't forget that it's your company and you have a clue of what's going on, no one else. The distribution, and that's actually a law that I uh, actually wrote when I was at NetVibe, is a good product is as good as it's rich. So if your reach is zero, you have a perfectly good product that nobody used. So distribution is actually the key of everything. Branding, for most of the people that are good at product, is okay. You create a brand, you, you nurture the brand, you do the product, you got a good team, you got a good experience. But then comes the distribution. How do I put this in the hands of everyone? Literally. And one of the biggest problems we have today is because the geek community is so big, sometimes you can have 10 million users like Instagram, or other companies like Dropbox, 25 million. And the key test is, do the real people, not the techie people, will use my product? So distribution is extremely, extremely, extremely important. It's actually the only reason sometimes VCs put money. You're gonna figure out your way in. And the thing is you have to try everything, especially for distribution. I'm gonna give you an example. When we started Jolly Cloud, we started as an operating system, and we, we actually built an HTML5 platform. At the time, nobody knew, had a clue about HTML5. But we went to see 19 uh, manufacturers of computers, and all of them said, this is interesting, but no. So we had 19 no. And uh, we thought about it, and we said, well, maybe we should go direct to consumers. So we created a distribution, and we, go, we went directly to consumers. And we also built our own computer, but that was just a funny thing, trying to, to prove them wrong. We actually proved them wrong because the product became the Engadget netbook of the year. And all the companies that actually said no to us were not even in the list. But sometime, you have to figure out the right way. And today, with Jolie Cloud, we're gonna announce that in a few weeks. We're now moving in the iPad and the iPhone. We have to find the right way to distribute. A good idea needs distribution. Try everything. I, I cannot believe that people are, are following the bullshit of the lean startup, like you, get, you gotta pivot every six months. You have to try everything. At the end of the day, if you don't try everything, you come with regrets. You know, I had an opportunity to do a deal, distribution deal with NetVibe and Facebook back in the days, and we didn't do it. I didn't do it because I didn't take the time to say to my business team, you know what, let's, let's this old bullshit with all the media is over, let's focus on that, let's do the Facebook deal. And this is one of the things I didn't do, and actually I think when you know how big Facebook is, that is something I really regret. So the only answer not to having regrets is to try everything, literally everything. So the winning product CEO formula is, is pretty simple. Great brand, product vision, awesome execution. We didn't talk about it, but that's obvious. If you build a company, if you build a product, you want to do it perfectly. If you don't, just quit, do something else. But the job of a CEO is to do a perfect execution. Distribution, figure out a smart way to get there. Taking the time, buy time with your VCs, with the market, with everyone. Buy time to make sure that you can spend the time on the things that matter. Because if the product becomes super successful, you won't have the time anymore. And don't quit. And if you do that, there's a really cool startup going on. The last thing, simple advice, is make sure to celebrate small victories. This is something I didn't do much at NetVibe, and I do all the time now with Jolie Cloud. Because at the end of the day, the only thing you will have are small victories. 
This is a very shitty job we do. It's an exciting job, but you don't win every day. So every time you have a small win, you have to make sure that you celebrate with your team. So you, you can see this iteration, small win to small win to small win to big win. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was awesome.